gentlemen, will you please welcome Lenny McAllister. Lenny. In America, conservatives are accused of having energy but no eloquence. We're told that we are passionate, that we have no principles. We're accused of, ha of lacking substance, and we're told we have no statesmanship whatsoever. We are characterized as a flash in the pan and not built to last. Well, I'm here to say clearly, loudly, today, those claims are absolutely, positively wrong. Yeah. What they don't understand is that conservatives are energetic because of our love for the very best of American values. That love is eloquent, that love is passionate, and that love is substantive. Conservatives are passionate because our concern for the future of America is founded in the disappointment in modern day politics. Our passion is grounded in the ideals of this great nation and it is genuine in wanting the best for our children and our grandchildren. And those values, those conservative values that we extol, they built America and they are surely built to last. There's something special about the modern American conservative movement. I want to highlight that this Tea Party movement, as we are called, has the statesmanship, the stewardship, and the leadership necessary to return the United States of America to its rightful place of international glory starting in 2012. We not today or any other tax day moving forward as a day to complain about the woes of our nation. See, this is why. There are those throughout the land that will tell you, and they will tell, say to others, Tea Party conservatives are nothing more than a bunch of complainers that don't want to pay their fair share, or don't like having a black president, or don't want to do what they feel is best for the nation. To refute that, we must continue to follow this other ground rule, starting today. Do not allow somebody to call you a complainer, do not get involved in idle complaining. Because the Tea Party movement is not about complaining about paying taxes or having a black president or doing what some people feel is best for the United States of America. Nor should this movement ever be concocted, directed, or hijacked in those directions. If we ever allow this sound movement to go off the rails completely and go in that direction, whether it be in our hearts or our minds or in the media, we have lost that last great opportunity to rescind the empty promises and bloated checks that American politics has given us over the last several decades. We simply want fiscal responsibility in government with our tax dollars, not unmitigated and ongoing spending disasters in the halls of government. This is not complaining about taxes. This is nothing more than speaking up for future generations of Americans before they have an opportunity to speak up for themselves. We simply want leadership that listens to and works with people, not leadership that deals the crony politics when it comes to wasteful spending with things such as Solyndra and the passage of unconstitutional legislation such as the Obamacare health care reform bill. That is not racism. That is merely reminding the President, the House of Representatives, and the Senate that they work for the American people and must listen to the American people, not the other way around. We simply want Springfield and Washington, Democrats and Republicans, neighbors and strangers, to have the insight to understand and the courage to enact the patriotic choices we face today. Doing what feels good in America is not always doing what is good for America. Let me assure you, we are not complainers. We are patriotic, we are courageous, and we will win this battle for America's soul and for the nation's prosperous future. Inactive. Americans, and particularly the Tea Party Patriots, folks such as you here today. You're active, 
you're engaging, and you're inspiring. Americans, and particularly the Americans standing with us today throughout the nation, are protesters, proactively looking to make a difference in the communities around them with a sense of patriotism that we should have had a long time ago. If we are going to win back the future, 2012 cannot be a continuation of the same old, same old, or the end point of a narrow-minded strategy of home. Instead, I tell you, 2012 must stand for a new beginning, a new hope, and better change. 2012 is not an election year for resetting American politics. It is an intention year for setting the roadmap for the future of America. It is more than just about who we're going to vote for in November. It is about whom we have become recently and who we want to be moving forward. This is not just about voting one set of politicians out for another. This is all about ushering in a new, more efficient, more responsive, and more effective set of politics starting in 2012. a new beginning and a new hope, but that hope cannot be limiting or narrow-minded. It is very easy to think that 2012 is merely about November. That's what the media is telling you. That's what most politicians are telling you. If November is your end point, today is not your beginning. If January 2013 is your end point, 2012 is not your beginning. Those of us that understand that 2012 is our beginning, also know that America's future and better change for that future is our end point and it allows us to be protesting in the proactive sense of our American history, not be complainers or couch potatoes. It emboldens us to be historic in our patriotism, not haughty in our activism. It shows us that bringing about a better change for America can have different methods and, te and techniques even with the same time-tested value that has made the diverse American people the envy of the world. My fellow Americans, this year, 2012, cannot just be a rallying cry for a new president or a shift in Washington or in Springfield. It must be more. 2012 must be a launching point. A new beginning for a better change that elevates the future through honoring and embracing the best aspects of our conservative past. We bring better change to our being proactive, to our protest, and through our patriotism by ways of events such as today. It's in our national DNA. It's what we do. It's how we inspire. It's how we succeed as a people. A better change from this new beginning comes from more than just changing our political players in the game. It comes from changing the dynamic that politics is a game. That better change comes from changing the mindset that tax revenue is monopoly money to be wasted carelessly. That better change comes from changing the mindset that major decisions in government are made only after big-handed, big wigs cast their political dice to see who gets your representative's attention instead of you. The better change we're talking about comes from changing the mindset that political leadership is about doubling down on sound bites or beltway infighting instead of listening to the people they were supposed to represent in the first place. American politics, American governments across this land are not games for the privileged. They are gateways of freedom for the people of this land, this great nation. With this new beginning in 2012, those in office will act as the defenders of these gateways that they're supposed to be, or they will see just what type of game changers the American people will be in 2012 and beyond. I believe in the new beginning granted to us by God here in 2012. I believe in the new hope for a stronger America through our protest and our activism, through our inspiration from the past and our inspiring actions for the future. 
I believe that by us being involved and by staying educated and engaged proactively, we will win elections, we will win more hearts and minds, but most importantly, we will win the future and take back America. What they don't understand about us is this. We know that America is not a color. And the red, white, and blue of our flag can be found shades of tan, shades of brown, shades of black, and shades of white. We know that America is not a nation of cowards or complainers. And the melting pot of this great country can be found the ingredients of revolution, the substance of liberty and prosperity, the bread of life from our broad-based values, and the spice of life from our diversity. And let me be clear, America is not the land where conservatism came to die in this world. And you, in our new beginning of 2012, our new hope found in your efforts and activism, our better change for the future by the work of your hands. In you is everything. We need to change the national conversation, improve the dysfunction in government, transform past disappointments in politics, and scale back the bloodletting of the public goal with our tax dollars. Yeah. My fellow Americans, in 2012, you symbolized that new hope. In 2012, you light the pathway to that better change for us all. In 2012, starting today, you are that bridge to winning the future. Starting right now, I ask that you embrace that change. You embrace that new beginning. You embrace that hope. I do, and I'm asking you to join me in doing so. I do so because I believe in you. I do so because I believe in our conservative efforts. And if we can do this together, America, across racial lines, religious creeds, socioeconomic classes, and educational backgrounds, will win the future together. I believe in you, and I believe in the greatness of the United States of America. So let's get to doing it, starting with a new beginning, grant us today in 2012. Thank you for this opportunity to speak with you. God bless Illinois and God bless the United States of America. Thank you.